coming to you from Millbog, Utah. This is Brandon and Moody. This is a revolution. We are here to save you from mediocrity. So don't expect us to take you down any well-traveled rabbit holes or dig up the same old bones. This is a horse show. By fans, for fans, and with the fucking fans. I am John Rhodes. The madman son of a bitch has taken up the charge with the fire starter himself. Well-proven, ever-lovable, and oh, so unstoppable, Michael J. This revolution is a call to arms for all horror fans because we deserve better. And that's why I started this, to give us, the fans, a chance to be heard by the world. All right, thank you everyone for joining us. This show is kind of packed right now, so we're going to keep this tight. But right off the bat, I want to thank Blind Society for giving us this song, our new theme song, Not Afraid to Die. Check them out. Great band. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, it is a very awesome song. I'm I'm thrilled that we have it, actually. Uh, I really kind of dig it. So, um, yeah, that'll be good. The, uh, the rest of it here, you know, I listened to that speech again. And you, sir, sound like you're, you know, just the guy that's so assertive and just out there and just, like, really out there ready to go bust some heads. And I'm just, like, little, um, kind of scared, short gentleman <laughs> off to the side. Yeah, see, you say off to the side, and I kind of envision it of you sitting there reading cue cards somewhere. Oh, well, yeah, it did kind of <laughs> sound like that, and I mean, you know, my acting is terrible. Ugh. Yeah, I do recall having watched a couple of yes. your movies. Well, so. I, I, um, uh, you poor bastard. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, well, we are going to get into our interview with uh, Dan Yeager, who is the new, uh, your new Leatherface right uh in a few minutes here the audio or not the audio itself the connection was a little bad unfortunately so some of his um words may be a little choppy at times no i i listened to it again it doesn't really ruin the interview at all it's just we want to make everyone aware of this ahead of time right i mean and i can't it was very tough to kind of go back and and uh you know look it over but i mean again to me it kind of adds to the realism of the whole thing and that's what this show is it's real so you know we're basically putting you there uh, in the middle of it so to speak all right well with that being said without further ado we're going to take a break real quick and then we will be back with dan yeager himself With us is the brand new Leatherface who just massacred at the box office, Dan Yeager himself. Thank you for coming on, Dan. We appreciate it so much. My pleasure. It's nice to be here. Now, 
I've done a little bit of research reading up on, and uh, you said that you are a huge fan of the original. So I, I just have to ask, having been a fan of the original, what was it like for you to put on the mask and fire up the chainsaw the very first time? Well, I'll tell you, as, as a fan, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of, it, 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 it's all been a bit of a, an out of body experience. Uh, yeah, to, to, to actually be there in that moment um, and and to do it, it's, I don't know, I, I haven't really come to grips with it yet. I mean, it's, 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 it's overwhelming, you know, when you, when you try and conceive of it, it's, it's, it's almost too much. It's, 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 it's too much to ever hope for. Um, and then, shoot, it happened. It, it was incredible. Uh, and if if anybody ever has the chance, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to put this out there. If anybody ever has a chance to put on that mask and fire up that chainsaw, uh, do it. It's it's wonderful. <laughs> it now, really is. I, I remember Gunner saying quite a few times that he had a lot of problems with that mask running into stuff. Did did you have the exact same problem? Um, actually, they did pretty well. Uh, in designing it, uh, one, you know, one of the, one of the things they realized, I think, early on was, as much as the script focused on Leatherface as as a as a character, um, they really needed him to come through, you know, the mask. And so, if you look at the, the at the at the design of the mask, uh, you know, they they really tried to to make it uh, very and and to it, it, I think it was considerably easier to wear than the one uh, Gunner did most of his work. Now, in the movie, you actually your your character stitched the mask on. Now, was that like uh, glued on, or or how was that attached? Um, they they tie on. Oh, okay, just an under your um, hair. There's there's a thong runs the back and is you know both of them oh okay uh, the, the one mask you see earlier in the in the uh in the movie actually has a bit of a skull piece to it um you know so it actually wraps around your head it's it's, it's wait was was that the uh the one where uh you actually played the younger leather face no i did not play the younger leather face that was, oh okay yeah, that that was an actor's name's uh, um, um, Sam McKenzie, uh, and he's he's the one who doubles Gunner, you know, in you know from the archival footage. Oh, okay, uh, that's it's that's all kind of mixed sorry. together, him and and Gunner, uh, in in the beginning of the movie. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> now. You've said several times that you're a fan. So yes. being a fan of this franchise, what helped you create your own version of Leatherface? I mean, because from in this movie, there's been at least 20 to 30 years that have passed with Leatherface. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, I told this to Gunner when I met him on set. I said, I said, I, I, I ripped you off as, as, as mercilessly as I could. I mean, I wanted, you know, I wanted this, my, my version to be, you know, the older version of his. And so, you know, I, I studied the movie, uh, you know, even more, you know, I, I probably went back and watched it half a dozen times, you know, looking for, for the subtleties of, of his character. And, and then he, he's actually given a few interviews, you know, where he talks about the character and, and who the character is. And I really, you know, I really, I mean, being, being a fan, that was my number one goal was, was to do something that Gunnar Hansen would say, yeah, that's good. You know, so, um, you know, I, I, I studied the hell out of it. And then, uh, of course, a lot of a lot of life changing things have happened to Leatherface in the course of, of 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 our movie, and so it was really just you know 
taking what Gunner had created and 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 applying this new set of circumstances, which are are really profound and and changed Leatherface's worldview, uh, you know, in 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 a really fundamental way. And he's gotten older, you know. He's he's and he's lived a completely different life by the time I get a hold of him. You know, he's he's down in a basement and he's being cared for by his grandmother. You know, and that's completely different from what he had experienced, you know, before the fall of the Sawyer House. So, you know, I, I, ha- I had so much to work with in in the script. I mean, it was it was it's it it all comes out of the story. Now you brought up. Uh, Gunner, um, knowing that he has a cameo, did you actually get to to meet and talk with him? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we were we were actually that was uh, that was a little over halfway through the shooting process, and so I had already done you know most of most of of my stuff, and you know had had already established you know kind of my take on it, and then you know. Gunner and I were actually shooting on two different units. Uh, my unit was shooting at night, you know, doing a lot of those things in the woods. Like, uh, I think I was actually shooting that uh, that part where Leatherface comes up out of the grave and 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 actually goes down into the grave. That 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 whole sequence was was going on at the same time they were they were doing the Sawyer House stuff. But okay. I, 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 I made a point of going over to the other set and, you know, I, I had to meet that guy and, and had to had to had to try and, you know, in a fumbling, you know, fan sort of way, tell him, you know, how much what he did meant to me. I mean, you know, it was and, and you know, I, it was weird because, you know, I mean, as a fan of Texas Chainsaw, I never once, you know, considered Leatherface as, you know, somebody, you know, I would one day be playing and then, you know, to have to go back and, and, and get into it. It was, it was an interesting experience. You know, I, I feel, I feel like I have a, a, a friend in, in both Gunnar Hansen and Leatherface now. It's, 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 it's amazing when you get that close to a character. It's, it's weird, especially a character like him. I mean, now, with your your attachment to him and what you just said, I, I have to ask. There's been a lot of back and forth around a possible sequel. Um, do you know anything about that? Well, because I know yeah, as a fan yeah. of this one, I'm I'm sorry, but I know as a fan of this one, I would love to see you reprise that role. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, you know the the producer has the rights to make a total of. Um, that was, that was the deal he made with, 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 uh, you know, the, the creators. And so, you know, there was always the idea of doing more movies. We, you know, it, and it's business, you know, if, if the movie, if the movie does well in the box office, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely make more. Um, but the, you know, that's a business decision. And I'll tell you, I was, I was at a, I was at a party Oh, geez, it's a little over a week ago. Well, it, it was opening weekend, whenever that was. And uh, I met Toby Hooper, and uh, there was a lot of talk. I mean, the, the movie had had gone number one for Friday and was, was looking good for Saturday, so everybody was, was feeling up. And there was, there was, I mean, there was talk at that point, you know, amongst – executives at Lionsgate and, and, uh, the producer and, and, and everybody about, you know, what do we do next? And, and, uh, everybody was definitely positive about it. There was a, there was a, a spurious story where, where, uh, 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 I guess the people at Millennium kind of, you know, uh, prematurely announced that they were going to go ahead with a sequel. Well, you know, that's not, that wasn't their call. Oh, okay. And, it, it it had been straightened out in the press, I guess, and and uh, you know. But anyway, yeah. The the Carl Mazzacone is the is the sole producer on this movie, and uh, I think he's very encouraged to to make another one. Um, you know, because it, it's done fairly well. It it didn't do as well the second weekend, you know, just because of all the, you know, the Golden Globes and and and. Uh, 
and you know the the zero dark thirty buzz was just incredible. So, you know. Anyway, it, it looks promising. I mean, nothing nothing has been decided. I think they're you know I think they're going to be very careful because you know we 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 took the responsibility of 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 a Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequel very very seriously, and we 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 wanted to to make something that uh, you know was was legitimate, you know, that, that fans would enjoy. And so now that they've, they've had the success they had, they, they, they don't want to risk, you know, just rushing into it and, and doing something that, that, that isn't going to be, you know, a credit to what has gone already. So yeah, it looks good. Um, we'll see if, 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 uh, you know, if, 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 if it does really well in the box office, we'll probably shoot one this summer. Um, if not, it'll take longer to do it, but I, th- I think it will come eventually. Well, I, I for one, really hope so. Um, I went in actually a little bit. I'm sorry. I, I went in actually a little bit skeptical, but I have to say, by the time I left, I was blown away. Well, thank you. Now, you said it was number one at the box office, and, and you guys definitely killed. And then we had the awards talk and some bigger movies come out. And for some, and for some reason, some of the chains decided to, to drop the movie or, or um, have less showings. But regardless of that, how was it for you to know that you were the star of the number one movie at the box office? Um, it was, it was, it was really strange because I have no frame of reference. You know, I, I've, I've, ne- I've, I've never, I've never done an, uh, you know, another theatrically released movie. So, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure what it feels like to be number three. <laughs> okay. Good point. Now, I, I know there's a lot of controversy, controversy, sorry, with, uh, fans out there talking um, they're curious as to the time frame of this movie. Now, it, there is some inconsistencies because uh, we're saying, you guys are saying that it's a direct sequel from the 1974, uh, but Heather looks like she's in her mid-20s. Uh, can you shed any light on that for us? Um, yeah, you know, there there was... I think the decisions that led to, you know, what to me are anachronisms, uh, you know, some of, some of the cars, uh, you know, the the, uh, the iPhone and stuff like that, you know, and on, uh, you know, Verna Carson's tombstone. Um, the, the, I, th- I think trying to make a movie – that that you know largely young people you know could could really you know get into um they they just kind of threw the timeline out the window it really just said we we just want to make we just want to tell a good story and you know yeah, I, I, I think that I think that's going to drive, you know, hardcore, truly obsessive fans to distraction. But they, they, you know, they 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 needed to make uh, a movie that that would uh, you know compel as many people to go see it as possible. So I, I think that's what kind of drove those decisions. Yeah, to me, it should be you know late nineties rather than 2012, but, you know. Yeah, to me, it, it, to me, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I got lost in the film regardless, and I just know there was a lot of talk about that out there, and I figured that since we had you on, we would take the opportunity and just try and clear that up. Yeah, no, I, it's, 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 it's definitely, you know, something that, that has caused a lot of conversation which also may have motivated them. You know, they knew. I mean, if you can't cause a little controversy with your movie, you know, 
I mean, even even uh, if it's if it's and and if you, people are always always worried, I'm going to get offended if they say something bad about anything about the movie. And and you know, I I love the I love the people who get on there and criticize it because it keeps the conversation interesting. You know, it it's it's just a love fest. We all love the movie. You know, it's that 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 gets old real fast. Yeah. There, there are definitely things you can you can pick apart. Yeah, definitely. Say, yeah, but I like overall, it. it was an enjoyable film. Um, I, I have something else real quick uh, because you are a, a fan of the original, and I just have to ask: Do you feel that genre films today lack the quality or ambitions? from some of the films like this one in the seventies or eighties? Yeah. You know, scene of, of later movies, uh, more, more recent, uh, movies is, is, is they do tend to overly rely on the, you know, the sensational visual of it, you know, which ends up being gory and violent or, you know, you know, sexy girls or whatever it is, uh, you know, mo- movies from the mo- movies seventies were, you know, stories, you know, and, and that's what we tried to tell was a story rather than just make a, you know, make a chainsaw movie. Uh, we wanted to, we wanted to tell a story because the, 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 you know, the characters are actually compelling and, and, and it's interesting to see what happens to them. No, you're you're definitely right. This one had a big story. Now, what did you think of the way that the uh, the story went with this one? The way we kind of changed up the tone from the original and how we end up viewing Leatherface. Um, it was. I mean, it's what what attracted me to the movie and the. You know, I I read the script a fairly early draft. Uh, not with the idea that I was going to be playing Leatherface, but you know, it was it was a movie a friend of mine was developing, and uh, and it was it was really striking. I thought, you know, they it it, it reminded me a lot of uh, of uh, James Whale's you know Frankenstein movies. Uh, you know the way you know this 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 monster had, you know, become, uh, you know, kind of the, the, the redeemed, uh, character, um, you know, and, and, and the, and the, and the true horror and the true, you know, bad guys are, are out there among us, you know, in, in a much more, hey, you know, rather than just one chainsaw wielding, we've got action on every level. You know, there there are bad characters throughout the movie, and I thought it was interesting how they juxtaposed. You know, kind of. I mean, there 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 were definitely references. You know, just in the in the fact that there were there were four four kids in a van uh, who picked up a hitchhiker. You know, there are they're analogous with the original movie, uh, and and it's always interesting to compare, like you know, the the Nikki character with the Pam character. You know, it's there's, there's a bit of social commentary there. I mean, Pam was 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 kind of this wholesome, pretty girl who who you know she was. She was just, you know, wholesome to me. Yeah. And and then you've got Nikki, you know, and she's kind of the modern, you know, woman with 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 an edge, and you know, she's she's a bit of a slut. So yeah, I mean, yeah. That's, it's, it's it's interesting where we're going as a society, and and and, and I think the writers, you know, were, were 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 making a certain social commentary there, which which to me for a horror movie is is really interesting. So. Did I answer your question, by the way? I forgot what your question even was. <laughs> no, you, you totally got my question. And I thought it was really interesting that you actually brought up the point that uh, it was 
kind of in line with the Frankenstein films with the tonal change of how we view Leatherface. I, I actually did not think of that, but I have to agree 100%. Well, when I read that uh, that scene in the kitchen, you know, I, I, I knew it was it was the moment where, you know, the Frankenstein monster is is becomes human in the in the hermit's, you know, hut in in Bride of Frankenstein. I mean it's the you know, it's the same tale. I, I have to tell you there there was from this movie really two iconic moments for Leatherface. And you just referenced one of them, the kitchen scene. I thought that was great towards your character and the development of all that. I thought that was amazing with how the story was going. Uh, I didn't think it could have been played out much better. I really liked how you were kind of going along with it until she went towards the mask. I, I thought that was great. Thank you. And, and another one, uh, when you finally got to stand up and fire the chainsaw at the end in the factory... I, that was kind of like the the hero moment for Leatherface. I felt, and that was that was really gratifying to get to see that in theaters. I I greatly appreciated that. Well, good. Yeah, th- those those were both fun scenes to shoot. <laughs> and and you mentioned references to the original. Now, would you say your kill of the hitchhiker in this one is almost a reference to the first kill in, in the first one because? The the suddenness of it and the mallet being used as the weapon, I, I kind of feel there's there's somewhat of a throwback there, but I almost want to say this one was done a little bit better because I actually jumped with this one. Well, that's that, that's that's also the power of 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 you know high definition three D cinema. You know. Yeah, it, it, it helps that there's the sudden shift and all of a sudden Leatherface is jumping out at you with a mallet and it's in 3D. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of startling. <laughs> yeah. No, it, and, and, you know, yeah, there, there are a lot of stylistic, uh, you know, references in the movie. The, the director is a, is a great fan of, I know he loves Hitchcock. And, uh, and he also, I, I think, has an affinity for, for uh, you know, the, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of the later uh, horror movies and, you know, yeah, the, the style of that whole thing where, you know, the, the victim himself actually reveals his face. You don't see him until the, you know, the t- until poor Daryl stands up and then boom, he's there. You know, he was in front of, he was blocking the camera's view of Leatherface. Yeah. And then out of the darkness, he appears. Yeah, that worked really well. Now, Dan, part of our show is that we're interactive and we try and give fans the chance to actually interact with their 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 stars, their favorites. And we have actually we have uh somebody on the line right now that would like to speak to you. Uh, I believe we have Shannon waiting to talk. Yes, hi. Hi, Dan. Hello, Shannon. I'm Leatherface. <laughs> so, Shannon, so you had a noise. question for him? Yes. I was wondering, because as many women ask you to wear the mask as you do. Um, no, no woman has ever asked to wear the mask. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure what you have in mind. But <laughs> okay, I, thank I, you. I, I got to say, I wish I had that mask. Oh, they they're, didn't let you keep it? No, they're locked up somewhere. I don't know, in in safekeeping. I, I'm 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 hoping they're they're preparing them for the next one. Yeah, actually, you know the one the one thing I get a lot is 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 uh, you know when when people when I meet people and they find you know most no, nobody ever recognizes me of course because of the mask. Yeah, but they find out you know who I am and what I've done. Um, guys, especially, will ask me if I'll I'll take a picture trying to kill their girlfriends. <laughs> and there 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 are a lot of pictures out there where I'm you know fake choking 
girlfriends for guys. It's 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 and it's the an saw. <laughs> Pardon? The saw the saw is family. But you definitely get I get some pictures with the saw too. Yeah. Oh I I wish I had those chainsaws too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now thank you very much for coming on, Shannon. Thank you. You guys have fun. N- nice talking to you, Shannon. Thank you. Very nice talking to you too, Butterface. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Now, we had a couple other listeners that weren't able to call in due to scheduling, so I actually have questions that they wanted to ask lined up. Uh, are you fine with me go- just going down a list of some of the fan questions? Sure. All right. Uh, First off, we have uh, a question from Justine. She writes, um, <laughs> did you get hungry filming the first kill where you uh, bash in the hitchhiker's head? Um, <laughs> yeah, no. Actually, you know, that, the, the, the process of, of shooting it is, is vastly different than, than watching it. Um, Doing it, you know, it was, I mean, it's, it's, that was pretty easily. Um, it took a lot of, of, uh, you know, muscle to, uh, to bash that head in that way because, you know, we, we didn't, we didn't want to use, uh, you know, a, a heavy hammer because that shot you see where he gets hit in the face, that's a real guy. Oh really? And so you know they 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 you know the and and swinging a heavy hammer, you know you you just increase the risk of of it slipping out of your hand or something and somebody getting hurt. I mean it it would it would absolutely kill somebody if you if you actually did that to them. Yeah. And and so the hammer was a little lightweight, and so all that bashing you see is is pure you know you know physical bashing i mean it's you know it, it would have you know in the second part of it it would have been better to have a a, a heavier hammer but yeah it is so gross though I mean, <laughs> yeah yeah there, there was a lot of that a lot that we shot of that particular scene that there's no way they could use in the movie i mean it oh was really history. oh my god it was over the top oh well then i really hope there's an unrated dvd blu-ray coming out yeah, there's there's some unrated cuts, boy. <laughs> well, here's hoping it comes out. Yeah. Uh, I have another question from John. He asked, uh, "Was Leatherface's limp from old age or from cutting his leg in the original?" Uh, it, it was really both. I mean, you know, that was the one the one thing we really knew about Leatherface. You know, at the end of that movie, is you know he really hurt himself. Yeah, and so you know, I wanted wanted to and 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 go with it, you know, and and you know, yeah, I, I, and I figure he doesn't, he doesn't have the best of health care, and he didn't get the <laughs> you know medical attention that he needed, and and yeah, it probably you know, it, it, it I I think it would have affected you know the way he. Uh, the way he walked later. And then, yeah, some of it is the fact that he is older. You know, I didn't want him to move like a, like a, like a teenager again, you know, um, not that I can, but yeah, you know, I think, I think that's important to, to show he is older now, you know, and that, and that's part of the story. And, and I think you did a really good job with actually tying that in. Cause I, I remember watching it and seeing you run with that limp, and, and I, I was actually kind of pleased to see that that carried over. Yeah, it's, it's 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 how we you know I hope identify him with that original character. I mean that that was that and and in doing this you know that was that was my 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 entire goal is if people could accept you know what I portrayed as being the same character as as uh, you know. Gunnar Hansen's leather face. I, I'm I'm happy. Now, just as a, a question for myself, uh, we've we've mentioned it several times that there's a time difference in that uh, Leatherface is older now, and 
you're preparing. How old did you figure that Leatherface was? Well, you know, we Leatherface is 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 somewhat timeless because we have no idea how old he is in the the original. Um, yeah, he he could be anywhere from probably, you know, sixteen to thirty in the original. We really don't know. I mean, Gunner was in his you know early to mid twenties, I believe, when he did. And, uh, you know, he always seemed younger to me, like he was probably in his late teens, be- just because of the family dynamic. Yeah, I figured he was about 18 to 20 from yeah, watching it. Yeah, that, that, that would make sense to me. And so, you know, Heather, as you've observed, is probably in her mid-20s. You know, that makes him in his early to mid-40s at this point. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah, I was just curious about that and wanted to ask so, all right, uh, we have one more fan question that was written in. Uh, this one's from Cody. He says, a lot of people state that they didn't like the mask that you wore through a lot of the film, that it looked like a Hollywood prop and it wasn't realistic. He said that he likes it because it does look like aged skin or leather, but he was curious as to if this was the basis of the look that you were going for, or, or were they just trying to make it scarier? Well, there were... They, they wanted to really make something that just looked old and worn. You know, something that he had worn, he damaged, and he tried to fix. And, you know, actually none of us really knows what happens to a, you know, a, a, a mask made of human flesh. Yeah. Years, but he, you know, the 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 first mask is, you know, kind of like his almost his his house slippers. You know, it's it's the one he's always worn. It makes him comfortable. He's he's, you know, he, he doesn't wear it to be scary. Um, he wears it because that's the the face he's comfortable with, you know, putting out to the world, which in, in, in this largely, you know, the world is, is very isolated. You know, he's living down in this basement, um, you know, behind the door that uses when he opens. Yeah. And and only one other person ever had the, we suspect that he had, you know, had gotten out, of the house a few times, you know, in the, o- over the intervening years, you know, and that's how he found out what happened to his family. You know, his, his grandmother probably tried to tell him a certain amount, but, you know, by the time we meet him again, you know, he's, he's had, he's had a good long time to stew on what had happened and, you know, to, 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 to formulate his his uh, his opinion about it, and and that's 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 one of the one of the interesting things that I think came out of the script is now Leatherface has you know an opinion. He didn't necessarily have one, or wasn't allowed to have one in the original. You know, he was told what to do, but he still expressed himself in some interesting ways in the original. You know, with his choice of faces that he would put on. Uh, yeah. And and I, I did really like that about this one, how Leatherface was making his own decisions and kind of like his own man, how the dynamic completely changed with him from being kind of the controlled ogre that was almost like an attack dog to now his own person. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they're there and and. Yeah, he, he, he basically grew up in those intervening years. He became, you know, an adult. You know, he's, he's still, he's, he's, he's still, you know, de- developmentally, you know, hunted. But he's no longer, you know, the childlike, uh, the, the, the childlike character that we saw run to that front window, you know, and 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 worry who else was 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 coming and 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 what was going wrong and why were these people in the house you know he he was he was he was seriously you know worried about that 
but you know there 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 are some there are some cues to who who he really is uh you know in the in the kitchen scene you know when he's making dinner you know he's 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 a genuinely uh i think loving loving person under all that you know i i i love the i love the scene where the 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 hitchhiker and leatherface go upstairs to get grandpa and when they bring him down and they they set him up in front of the at the at the head of the table you know leatherface pats his head and he kisses grandpa on the head you know i mean he's 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 really a you know there there there's a human being under there yeah and that's 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 what i love about the character and and i think you did a good job of portraying that he was a human being and not just a a mindless killing machine and i want to thank you for bringing that to the character well, that, that, you know, I, like I say, I met I met Toby Hooper for the first time at this party uh, a week and a half ago or so, and we talked about that, and 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 he said the same thing. You know, nobody has has really, you know, since the original movie, uh, bothered to to really look at who this character is. You know, they always took the superficial, you know, monster with a chainsaw who will come and get you kind of thing but but he really has you know he he, he's he's deeper than that and 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 that was that was what we wanted you know and really i think hardcore fans you know kind of know that you know uh at least of the original the the you know the later sequels you know kind of just dismissed him as this this you know he he functioned as the monster uh, in the stories, but, but it's, it's, it was, he, he was, he was made a bit more of a superficial character that way. Um, I, th- I, I thought in the remake and the, uh, and the, the, the prequel, you know, they, they plumbed the depths of his character a little bit, but, but always went more for the monstrous rather than, you know, the human, which, you know, I, well, as as it turned out, Toby Hooper agreed with with our take on it. So I was happy to hear that. Well, well, having said that, what did actually Toby have to say about this new movie? Um, he's thrilled. Uh, you know, I mean, he 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 was. I think he was totally blown away. He said, "Somebody finally got it. Somebody finally understood." you know, that, that family that he had created. And, um, you know, I, I, I told him, you know, I, I, I always, I always felt that let Leatherface always acted out of fear. He's, 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 he's afraid of the world. And, and so that's what really motivates his, his violence because he is violent. And yeah. He's, and and he said, yeah, that's it. You know, he's 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 uh, you know he's a he's a he's a he's a scared little boy. Uh, you know, in in the original, and and now you know we've we've added some some additional you know. Well, we 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 hope we've we we've, we've brought him into adult. Um, yeah, no, to- Toby couldn't have been more more generous with his compliments. I mean, we, 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 we talked and, and I, I felt like an idiot because, you know, I mean, just gushing over this, this, this guy who I've, I've, I've admired his work all my life. It's very weird to meet these people, you know, who, who had attained, you know, kind of, of legendary status in, in my own personal mythology. You know, it, it is hard to, uh, hard to kind of accept that they're just people walking around and, you know, creative and, 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 and regular people. So I was a little gushy, but anyway, when, uh, when we finally had to, had to leave, it, it got very late and, and I was saying my goodbyes and I, I went up to Toby and, and, and thanked him again for, you know, everything he had done, you know, to help us make this movie, creating the original and, and, he, you know, he reciprocated and 
you know, thanked me for 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 doing it justice. So that was a very rewarding rewarding moment to me. And he and he said, he, you know, I, I shook his hand and he said, I've got to hug you. <laughs> and you know, he's just such a genuinely nice guy. That's cool. Uh, I, I think he's glad that somebody finally really respected his work. You know, in this particular something that he wasn't used to. Unfortunately. Now, now, with you having said, you know, you were gushing over and trying to get to understand that these were just people. Is there any conventions or anything for you coming up where you'll be with these people and fans will be able to meet you? Um, yeah, I, I think they're booking stuff now. Um, there, there, there are a few things in the works. I'm not sure who all is going to be where, you know, uh, I, I'm not. The, 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 there, are, there are other people who do that, and I'm sure they'll just tell me where to go eventually. <laughs> uh, we were going to go to uh, – there's some big show in Atlanta coming up uh, first weekend in February, but I don't, I don't know what happened with that. Um, I think Gunner was going to be there. Oh, that would be amazing to get to meet both of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure uh, – I'm sure that's uh, in the office. I do believe we're both going to be at, uh, there's a big show in Charlotte in uh, late March. And I, I believe, uh, I believe uh, quite a few Texas Chainsaw people are going to be there, and I should be there too. So. Any conventions or anything like that that you will have, people will be able to find out about it through that uh, Facebook page. Uh, Dan Yeager is Leatherface. Yeah, there's a Dan Yeager Leatherface page. Um, I'm sure we'll we'll put it out there. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think there's actually a DanYeager.com page too. <laughs> um, there's stuff going all over the place. Wow. Okay. Um, now, are there any upcoming projects for you that people can expect to see you in? Uh. I haven't signed up for anything. I, I, I've actually auditioned for a few things, but uh, haven't 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 landed anything. Uh, I've been writing a lot, and that's kind of my focus now. Is uh, I've I finished one script uh, for a feature, and if uh, I, I I I think I'm going to try and make the uh, the big play to uh, direct it if if somebody let me. Um, also developing a, uh, a TV show with a, with a friend of mine, but we're just, well, we've got, a, we've got a few, uh, a few stories outlined and, uh, a couple of scripts in the works. Um, we're, we're probably going to self-produce it just to, just to kind of help us flesh it out. And then, uh, you know, it'll, it'll, if, if it's, if if somebody picks it up, it'll it'll end up on television. But otherwise, you know, we're just going to do it for our own uh, uh, edification and uh, put it online. Um, but that's in the very early stages. So yeah, we'll see. It, it, I think I think uh, I think probably until the summer, it's going to be mostly uh, conventions and personal. Okay. Well, I know me and Mike wish you the best with all those projects. Um, we're going to try and stay up to date, so if there is anything coming out, we'll we'll uh, definitely try and hit you up and get you back on and get some information out there for the fans. Excellent. And um, in closing, uh, is there anything that you'd like to tell the fans out there? Um, well, I, I, I hope I hope they know that that we really we really did our best to to you know honor the 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 movie that that uh we're all fans of uh and and you know i i i just uh i i hope they they know we didn't we didn't take it lightly it wasn't just uh you know looking to 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 cash in uh uh on 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 a on a beloved franchise you know we're we're we we actually tried to make a a legitimate uh, sequel. So, um, yeah, and and, and I, I, you know, I, I've gotten it's 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 really almost well, it, it it's 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 very overwhelming. Just the 
the outpouring of support that I've gotten from from fans. I mean, horror fans are are are, are some of the best people, which kind of surprised me because I was never really into the you know the whole horror convention scene, but in 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 meeting people who who really you know follow horror uh there there's there must be something about horror that just attracts good people because it's it's been nothing but and 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 uh thank everybody for for being so generous to me personally i mean it's it's I'm 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 almost speechless here, as you can tell. Well, Dan, thank you very much for making this great companion piece to the original. Thank you for coming on, and we really appreciate this. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, guys. We wish you all the best. Take care. This is Michael J., and you're listening to The Morbidly Made. Now let's take a trip behind the scenes. Relax, man. He's calling us. That, that's what... Okay, here he is, dude. Hold on. Dan? Yes, Hi, sir. Hi, Dan. How you doing? I'm Mike, and with me is John. How you doing, Dan? Hi, John. How's the sound? Sounds great. Good. All right. We're really excited to have you on. Well, I'm excited to be here. I have to say, I was actually a little bit nervous to talk to you, but uh, Why? you seem really laid back and relaxed, and that's that's awesome. <laughs> what are you nervous about? What am I nervous about? Well, to be completely honest with you, uh, this is my first interview, and I, you just came off from being number one at the box office. Yeah. <laughs> In your leather face. So not many people get to talk to leather face every day. And we're back with the Morbidly Made. That was a great interview with Dan Yeager, your new Leatherface, of course. And joining us now for this segment, we have John Rhodes and Cody Robinson, a fan who has called in to discuss Texas Chainsaw 3D. All right, thanks, Mike. Um, first and foremost, uh, this movie is kind of the perfect companion piece to the original. I, I watched the original purposefully and then went to the theaters and watched this one. And I got to say, it lines up pretty well. I love the fact that it picks up maybe at the tops an hour after the first one ends and goes straight into it and then jumps ahead into the future. Now, there there are some problems that I'm sure me and Cody will get into. But overall, I, I thought the film was really good. Uh, I feel that it, maybe if it had a stronger director, some of the scares and whatnot could have paid off better. But I thought Dan Yeager did a good job bringing Leatherface to this new generation. I'd give it a, a solid seven. I mean, it was very enjoyable. I actually want to watch it again now with the full knowledge of it. And I have to say there was at least one point that startled me and scared me. So it, it was a really good movie. Hey, John. Cody. John, before you yeah. get into it, let me just say, you better say that Dan was a good leather face because he's probably listening still. I hope he's listening, man. I, I loved that interview with him. He was a great guy. I really enjoyed that. But um, I'll let you guys talk because I can't because, you know. Yeah, Cody, uh, first and foremost, before we get into this, our famous Michael J. here couldn't find the time to watch the movie, so let, let's all not take... my fault. Yeah, come on, let's, Mike. The theater near let, let's me. Let's all take a second and point and laugh at Mike because he didn't watch the movie exactly. that our entire fucking show is about. Right, but here's the Pointing thing. laughing. Right. Sorry, Mike. But it, it, it's, it's a sad thing, really. Um, just because the movie went from first place opening weekend to 12th place the next weekend, the theater near me decided to basically just pull it from existence. So um, that's why. What a crock. Yeah, I, I don't right. like it. Where's their faith at? I know. It's gone. And, and see, that, that shocks me because it was number one. But yet they're yeah. so quick to drop it. Leatherface chainsawed the Hobbit, even. Yes. Yeah, and, and Django. I mean, the two huge movies that everyone was talking about, and Leatherface there, comes out of nowhere. But, Cody, what, what did you think of the movie? I gotta admit, I went into it not knowing a whole lot about it. I knew it was a direct sequel to the original. 
Uh, I had very low expectations. I, I wasn't expect for some reason in the back of my head. I just was expecting it to completely suck ass, and I was <laughs> blown away. I, it was com- completely the opposite of uh, what I was expecting. It's the first horror film in years I've watched that I actually felt like it was made for specifically for the fans of the franchise first and uh, the general public second. Yeah, that that was a really nice thing that, you know, they they were so true to the fans and it was not really whoring itself out to the general public trying to make a lot of money. It it was sticking true to its roots and it was really just honoring what Texas Chainsaw was about. I appreciated that too. Exactly, exactly. Now if if you had to rate this that, that's that's a hard one. Uh it wasn't it wasn't perfect. I mean the film had its flaws. Definitely. But I mean it, it <laughs> can use this in a sentence uh, actually, uh, I guess you could call it the feel-good horror movie of the year. Uh, I, I mean, I, I just left the theater smiling. I, I give it a, I, I give it, oh man, a strong 8.5. I mean, that may be a bit much, but I just enjoyed the shit out of it. What can I say? No, you're you're exactly right. And so many horror films, you leave the theater not really feeling that. But with this one, and I don't know if you stayed after the credits, but this one, I, yeah, I, I did. Uh, you did? So, yeah, yeah, I yeah. ended up leaving happy, gratified, and just really fucking thrilled about that. I mean, they did such a good job with that. And the weird thing is, is that it doesn't really stay true to what the original was. And when I say that, I'm talking about, like, the tone of the movie. Because the first one was so dark and bleak and about the family and how there's really no chance of escape and, and how morbid these people are. But then this one completely shifts, and you get to learn more about Leatherface. You get to kind of understand him and, and actually sympathize for him and understand his motives. And fuck, by the third act, you're rooting for the guy. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I was sitting there, and he stands up after getting beat down and half strangled and everything, and he stands up, and he finally fires that chainsaw up, I almost got chills. I, I kind of wanted to stand up and just be like, fuck yeah! Yeah, uh, I mean, and the direction the film took like that, uh, making him, making Leatherface the the hero, basically, in the third act, I mean, it, I didn't see it coming. I mean, uh, the, mov- the movie kept me hooked through the from start to finish. It was a little slow in the beginning, I thought, uh, uh, after they got past the, uh, the original footage part, uh, and in the present day, but uh, it, it, it just had a good pace to it, uh, a good story. I, I really liked that they did something different with it and didn't try to make the same movie over and over again. I mean, you're always going to have your critics, uh, fans, uh, that it, they want the same movie every time. And that's one thing I found just uh, from what I've read, the blogs I've read on the, this film. You know, there, there's two types of people in this film. There's those of us who really love it and those who hate it. There's not a lot of in-between people on it. No, you're right. And I, I think a lot of what that is is so many people go into, like, almost like it's sacred and it can't be changed. But the people that made this movie really respected it but also wanted to put a yes. whole new spin on it. Yes, and, they stayed I... true to the character but gave us something new, gave us a new story, you know. No, they totally did, and I actually respect that because now with this, as as I'm going to consider it the original franchise of of Texas, I I respect that they did something completely different with the killer. We haven't seen it with any other one, really, of the big ones, and I I thought it was amazing what they did. It was something that I didn't see coming. I didn't really expect, so it... That was that was cool. I, I really appreciate it. However, my question would be, there's a lot of talks about a sequel. I really don't know where you can go with a sequel from that. Well, it's not really where could they go with a sequel from that, I don't think. It's how, how could they make a sequel that build on that same story 
and and have something that was on the same level as that. I, I, that's what I feel at least about it. No, no, I, I agree, and I think that's what I was trying to say is you know where they left off. It it'd be kind of I think it'd be kind of hard to kind of continue that storyline. I mean. They, they made him almost a hero, so I, I struggle to see where they'd go with that story. Well, in a way, when you think about it, they kind of backed the character into a corner by doing that, you know, painting him into a corner, at least. Yeah. Now, here, here's something that I thought was kind of like a missed chance, um, and also a missed chance on my part, because in retrospective, I should ask Dan about this, but now, when uh, Leatherface was chasing Heather through the uh, the carnival, did you expect him to just kind of go crazy during that, or did you just expect him to stay focused on her? Because me personally, I thought that was a wasted opportunity. That like pretty much anybody that stepped in his way, he I, I kind of half expected him to just kind of like hack away at people that just kind of got in his way of her. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with that. I, I really expected uh, that uh, carnival scene to be longer. You know. Yeah, but it just it just kind of came and went, you know. No, exactly. Now, Cody, did did you watch this in three D? Yes, I did watch it in three D. Awesome. Now, what did you actually think of the original footage with the three D aspect? I loved it. I loved it. I mean, I, I thought from the original footage and the, what what they reshot and cut with that, I, I thought it was virtually seamless it was virtually seamless I'll, I'll agree there i mean there was like the one little bit with uh the whole aspect of trying to integrate new actors in that was slightly odd to me honestly i i kind of left that very beginning montage almost wanting to watch that original in 3d oh yeah absolutely absolutely what did you actually think of the cameos in the very beginning because i knew that they were they were going to be in there i was expecting it uh, did did you think they fully paid off, or was it just good enough for you? Because to me, I, I was expecting a little bit more from Bill Mosley at least, but... Yeah. To, yeah, right, you, you kind of expect a little bit more, but I, I thought it was pretty good overall. I can't really complain about that. The only thing that kind of stood out to me is, here's two big things, is suddenly this really close-knit family is almost like the Hatfield and McCoy's going on with, like, all the, the town's folks outside the McCoy's and there, the Hatfields and their house and all that. I, I don't remember anything like that from the beginning, like, having just watched the original. That part struck at me as a little weird as all these people just suddenly showing up. And then another thing that really struck me as weird, and maybe you have something on this, Cody, the sudden thing that Grandma Sawyer is rich, has this great mansion and all this estate that kind of struck me as how did this hillbilly that lives in this little house with all this close-knit redneck family that eats people get into that mansion yeah yeah and where's uh why isn't granny sharing with the rest of the family you know yeah exactly you know if she marries into some money which is the only thing i could really come up with why the hell ain't she sharing now with this one it, it kind of shifts Leatherface's character. What did you think of how he came off? You know, I I really liked what they the way they evolved the character a little bit. I, I know there are a lot of diehard fans for the original. They're saying in the original he was more of like a blubbering fool, you know, blubbering retard, uh, you know, squealing and whining and whatnot. But uh, you know, yeah, I think this is this is uh twenty something years later. The guy's been living in a basement by his and I mean, yeah, mentally handicapped maybe, but it doesn't mean that he hasn't changed some as he as he's grown older. Uh, I really like that. I mean, it, 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 you still didn't know quite what to expect from him. He he still had that air of mystery to him. No, I I totally agree, and I think some of the things that kind of brought that together were the fact that. We, we watched him put on his mask, which with the original and this one, we never really got that full in-depth. And to, to me, it was slightly disturbing to actually watch him stitch it into his face. I, I don't know about you, Cody, but that disturbed me a little bit. Yeah, and, then, yeah, and a, lot of, a lot of people would say they just did that for shock value. But, you know, you got to think about how does he keep this face on, you know? 
Yeah, exactly. If it's not like an entire mask that he made, how the hell is he keeping it on? And I think they did a good job of explaining that. And you could say, why would anybody be crazy enough to put a needle through their cheek like that? Well, he, he's kind of wearing a, a mask made of human flesh, you know. So yeah, who the hell's crazy enough to wear a mask made of human flesh? <laughs> so, but I think overall they did a good job with it. And I, I think his evolution with with that mask, watching him get stitched on, and then the kitchen scene where, you know, Heather's taking care of him after the whole battle, and she goes to reach for his mask, and he just grabs her. You, you're still kind of wondering at that point as to what he's going to do. You're not sure as to if he's going to kill her or what at that point. And I, yeah, I think he did yeah. a good job with that. Yeah, like, hey, you're family, but, <laughs> hey, I, I got my own personal space. <laughs> Yeah, you could tell that there's definitely something about that. As soon as she went for the mask, he's like, all right, no, enough, bitch, we're done. Would you recommend this to people? Absolutely, yeah, especially horror fans, fans of the franchise, most definitely. I said it's one of those movies that I have not seen in a long time that not only catered specifically to uh, fans of the franchise, also, you know, it was fun. It appealed to the masses, and that's what a that's what a major studio film has to do to make money, of course. And, and, and I, I think I, it did it excellent. It did. And, and I think some of the problem was is some of the people don't really know what to expect coming in. Because when I was sitting there in the theater, some of the people seemed most excited that T.I. was on the screen. And really, that that was kind of disappointing to me. But, you know, as long as people are paying to go and watch this, I think that's great. I, I think more people should go and watch this and support something like this because it is different. It's original. And, and as a horror fan, that's what we want. We don't want the exact same crap. At least for me, I don't want the exact same crap. I want more stuff like this. I wouldn't mind seeing a Friday the 13th that ignored the remake and kind of continued from the original franchise. Oh, absolutely. And, and I hope that this film helped get the ball rolling on that with some of the big franchises, you know. Not to say, I, I, not saying I don't like all the remakes, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre remakes. I, I, I like the remake and the prequel, you know. I, I didn't think they were stupendous. I, I thought they were more artsy and done to appeal to the public in general. I would love to see more sequels, and I think they can really bring some of these franchises back uh, that have kind of went in the gutter, you know, some of the major franchises. I don't think they're too far gone. All it takes is good writing, good direction, you know. I, I know, just good writing, good direction, you know, that's all it takes. But uh, <laughs> you know, they need some good studio backing, and I, I think the sky's the limit. I'm going to be a little honest here, and Mike, this should probably allow you to come in, and this will allow some people to make fun of me. I watched this, and I, I rated it. We've heard how much I liked it. But here's the thing. Given the choice... I don't like the originals. The first movie is all right. I mean, I'll, I'll watch it. I've seen it probably three to four times. It's not that great. I, I'm not going to go back to it. The, the sequel, I, I, I didn't like the sequel at all. The third one, I didn't even bother with. And I think I saw the, the uh, fourth one on HBO maybe once. The original franchise, not that huge of a fan of. The remakes... I actually love the remakes of Texas Chainsaw. I, I think that they were really well done. I think they were scary and suspenseful. But this movie, I, I really like. I don't know what that says, but I figured I'd give Mike the chance to actually come in here and make fun of me a bit for, once again, liking a remake. <laughs> uh, yeah, because you liked the Nightmare remake on the pilot, and sorry, but you're an idiot for that. Um, no. <laughs> now, let's... let's, let's um... Let's get down to business here. Cody, I don't know how you feel, but I enjoy Texas Chainsaw, the original from 74, and I know that I'm going to get crap for it because I did on the Skeleton Crew that I like Texas Chainsaw 2. Uh, nobody else does, apparently, but I like it. Uh, 3, I thought, was a decent effort. It's not my favorite, but it's still decent. Uh, the Next Generation, the fourth one, was a pile of garbage that I cannot stand and I own it only because I'm a completist and I have to have the set but I watched it maybe once and that's it. Uh, the two remakes I enjoy, well the 2003 remake I liked the 2006 prequel I also liked 
I love the ending of Texas Chainsaw, the beginning, because the way that it ended, the bad guy won, and you don't see that in movies often. And you didn't see it coming. No, no, not at all. And that's what I appreciated. But I, I'll freely say, I think part of the driving force of me preferring the remake over the original was I watched it in theaters. I watched it on the opening weekend. It was packed. And it was one of those experiences in the theaters where a surprise happens on screen and you have girls all around you screaming, guys gasping. Of course. That really adds to the experience, uh, of too. Of course it does. So every time I watch it, I kind of remember that. So I really think that's part of the driving. It's the goal. nostalgia factor. That's all it is. So how do you how exactly. do you feel about it, Cody? Absolutely. You know, and I'm I'm one of these '80s kids. I grew up in the '80s and uh, I grew up with these movies. Uh, and definitely, and, and uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of the '80s kids. Well, all of the '80s kids are now getting up, slowly approaching middle age. And, and that nostalgic stuff is just becoming a lot more important than it used to be. The series on a whole, well, I can say it's all over the place. No continuity. They're fun. I, I enjoy all of them. I really enjoyed every film in, in the series. Yes, yeah, some more than others. Uh, I know a lot of people really like the bash on uh, part two. But, I mean, hell, Dennis Hopper with the chainsaw, you know. It, yeah, nothing else has gotten It was gotten You know, it, it, it was what it was. That's where that's where they were at when that movie came out. What was it, 87? Uh, 86 for part two, I think. 86? 86. Yeah, and, and that's where you got to think of a lot of the horror movies. And, you know, that's when, that's around the time that uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street started getting real campy, you know, uh Agreed. We're ready, yeah. and that's just the way a lot a lot of the horror films were uh, the direction they were heading at that time. I, I will say this now: viewing this as the original franchise with you know the original seventy four and then three D, I think this makes it that much stronger, and I really enjoy it. Um, I, I really can't say more than that. I have to agree with their choice to ignore all of them. I think it. I think that was the right way to go. Absolutely. Now, Cody, I want to thank you for coming on. Um, do you have any closing statements for us, anything you'd like to say? Everybody go out and buy Texas Chainsaw 3D when it comes out on DVD and Blu-ray. Damn straight. You want another sequel. Well, Damn straight. Sequel. If you like films like this, if you want to pay homage to the originals, get off your lazy ass, go out and watch it. Not just watch it, watch that motherfucker in 3D and spend the extra 3 $4. Well, Dan did say that Lionsgate has the option to make seven more films. So, yeah. yes, buy that movie so we can see seven more films. If you enjoy this one and want to see the story continued, it is up to us, the fans, to make sure that happens by supporting this film. Don't download it illegally because you're not going to get a sequel that way. Trust me, I know it's the easy way to go. It's the cheap way to go. But if you want another one, you've got to support Don't it. Don't be cheap. All right, Cody, thank you very much for coming on. Hey, my pleasure, guys. Anytime. Hey, I, I hope to hear from you in the future. Absolutely. <laughs> well, take care, guys. Hey, uh, what's that you got on your face? Huh? I'll come back for you! Well, that was a hell of a segment, wouldn't you say so, John? <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I'm back. I'm back. I, I'm good now. I, I took a little bit of time. I splashed some water on my face. I'm, I'm, I'm better. I'm good for this. That's, that's good. The, um, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that was, that was good though. I will say that. All in all, it was good. I think uh, you and Cody had a lot of fun, and um, I enjoyed giving my thoughts on Texas Chainsaw Massacre one through four and the two remakes. Uh, because I couldn't see the other film, unfortunately. I first and foremost want to give a special thank you to Avery McReynolds, who um, was very instrumental over the past few days of, of helping spread the word of the Morbidly Made and getting us a lot of new likes via Facebook and such. So um, I just would like to thank him a lot. And uh, John? No, I definitely agree with you 100%. Avery has proved himself to be a true friend of the show. Oh, most definitely. And then um, we also want to thank um, Dan for calling and taking the time to talk to us. We want to talk. We want to thank uh, Shannon for uh, calling in and uh, asking Dan that magnificent question. Uh, we want to thank uh, Justine, uh, John, 
Um, Cody, Cody wrote in a question for Dan and um, uh, everyone else. I mean, there was a couple other people that showed interest in it and we just didn't get questions or whatnot. And if you did try and submit one and it got list, lost in the mix, I, I do apologize. And you know what the sad thing is? I woke up uh, this morning to an email from uh, someone who had wanted to uh, take part in the whole uh, Dan Yeager discussion. And uh, I had to reply to her and say, you know, we already recorded. So um, Yeah, that's unfortunate. But anyone that wants to get involved, just stay tuned to our Facebook page, anything like that. We will try and put out as much information on that as we can. And also, just so everybody knows, if you have a question, a comment, a topic that you want discussed, you can email us at themorbidlymade at gmail.com. You can message us on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash themorbidlymade, or you can leave us a voicemail at 215-240-7839 anytime. Exactly. Um, and one last thing that we want to put out there, uh, since we try and stay interactive all the time. One of the segments we wanted to give a shot was the contagious movie of the week, which is simply a movie that uh, one of us will pick and we're going to leave it up to the fans. If somebody wants to throw out an option there too. And all it's going to be is that we'll try and watch it throughout the week. And then we will discuss it at the beginning of the next show. And any fans that want to partake can call in and leave messages or send us messages with your thoughts and opinions on the film. So our first film for this week was um, one that I picked. It is available on Netflix Instant for anybody who has that. Um, it's called Rites of Spring. I had <laughs> wanted to see it for a long time. And this is my excuse to uh, watch it now. So, All right, there we have it. Um, so anyone that wants to partake, please watch The Rites of Spring. And give us a call. Let us know what you think. Uh, or uh, send us a message. Yes, and um, we will be back next week with an all-new show, and since it is kind of fan interactive, we really don't know exactly what that's going to um, include, but please stay tuned to Facebook, and uh, we will uh, have updates within the next few days. All right, thank you very much for everyone that joined us and everyone else that's listening right now. We will see you next time. Later.